uh, probably need some sort of a musical intro, like you know, come in with a big bang. Yeah, sick All right. beat. All right, how you doing, Max? Long time. Good. Yeah, long time. Hello from um, from Lisbon, Portugal. It's awesome. How did you have a good trip? Well, I know that you nice. had a good trip, <laughs> but there were also some downsides of the trip. Realities of the modern age. Yeah, no. So. Uh, I'm returning to Sweden tomorrow very early, um, uh, if all goes according to plan. Um, but uh, Lisbon is indeed very nice, and uh, yeah, it's and feel especially lucky to be able to have a pretty sick mobile setup for dual screen uh, and be able to stream like this is, is fantastic. That's good. So yeah, how are you? I'm fine. I well, just you know, as a public announcement and for public safety reasons guys whoever is watching this now or in the future mm -hmm. this is uh june 2022 end of june almost you know midsummer yeah. right the longest day the pandemic mm -hmm. is not over no it's not <laughs> it is not be careful out there folks and get vaccinated yeah. if you haven't yeah. because we Feed, had a, wash your hands yeah yeah you a know, case of covid unfortunately stuff. yeah so not, not cool yeah. and full disclosure yeah. we have um uh oh sorry uh the setup the the traveling setup of of max i'm gonna <laughs> expose your inner secrets there you are oh yeah there, there it is. is yeah there you yeah. are that's um, all you need <laughs> absolutely coffee <laughs> and a coffee. portable uh, so tell me more about this screen thing, this Asus. Is it working out for yeah, you? Yeah, it is. Uh, I'm the screen I'm sharing now is not the the Asus, but it's uh, it weighs very little. It's very thin. You can set it up a multitude of ways. The only complaints I have about it is that it doesn't. You you can you can connect it via mini HDMI or USB C. It also uses USB USB C to charge, but you cannot stream your screen on USB C and charge it at the same time. So you need to to um to hook it up twice i mean it has a battery but you know uh, yeah yeah oh hence, hence the hence the two it. cords there right so yes, so sir. one of them is is the, the, the connection to the it's, computer and the other uh, yeah. one is the charger indeed ah yeah. okay well do, do you have any idea how, for how long the um uh, the you know i lasts? think they say four four or six hours which i somehow doubt um okay. when i tried it um, before leaving sweden it uh it ate up battery fairly quickly um but there are a number of settings you can tweak it to maybe have a lower image quality and, yeah and what have you and you see my little lappy stand yeah 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 so i was it, just about to switch to, to make a segue it, into that so yeah it's, it's this is a neat little thing i think it's called the neck stand and, and it folds down into basically a stick oh. uh so you know i put it with my clothes and my, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, traveling yeah, yeah. very light so that's awesome. uh, but it doesn't weigh anything and then that it, it raises things up a little bit um and you can see i have an external camera on my computer it's it's not for vanity it's just my laptop camera is broken <laughs> yeah okay all right um and that's so, one of the logitech yeah, versions or what, what are we uh it's actually a, a rapu uh it was some cheaper one <laughs> yeah anyway and okay. the apple external keyboard and yeah, and this and more logic mouse. mouse. I mean, right. that that one. Everyone has one of these. You know, yeah. they're they're fantastic. They yeah. last forever and and yeah. uh, get the job done. And I see you can also see my my Sony noise canceling headphones, uh, which I'm using the microphone. Can I right see them? Now. Oh, there they are. Right, there they are on the chair. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they are. Uh, yeah. When you're traveling, it's I, I resisted noise canceling for a very long time, but holy moly, it makes such a difference. Yeah, and wireless too, right? So Yeah, they're yeah. wireless. I mean they come with the wires so you you know, if you're traveling on an airplane and it's from the eighties and you can still hook up yeah. if you want to watch movies. Yeah. Um so yeah, that's that's the setup. But that's of course a, the stainless a, yeah, steel a... water bottle is a must. Oh, of course, of course. Yeah, this this bottle has been to the 80th parallel in the north and all the way down to Punta Arenas in the south. Awesome. So it's, it, it looks like a fantastic um, remote setup, uh, you know, and you can travel fairly light and still get the benefit yeah. of having, I mean, the, the, the dual screen setup is, is, in my opinion, a must. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, good good for you. Good for you. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, 
this is good. So I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna hook myself up with this uh, with this this screen as well. Uh, we talked about it before you left, and I just yeah. wanted to to hear your opinion on it. Yeah, now that it has been battle tested. Yeah, so, no, I'm, uh, I'm I'm liking it despite the USB C thing. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. and it wasn't that expensive, now was it? Two and a half grand Swedish crowns. Yeah, and it's probably cheaper outside of Sweden. I would imagine if you're right. If you're in the U.S., they go for I don't know, like hundred and fifty dollars, hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. so weird. We we had this discussion the other day, right? That the the te technology can be actually cheaper in the U.S., whereas oh yeah, uh, booze and wine and stuff is is uh, is way more expensive. Uh, I think I yeah. sent you a link to uh, to some sort of. Um, yeah, like a comparison. I don't know if you had time to check it out, but uh, so you know, I'm I'm into bartendering a little bit. So mm -hmm. this one, oh sorry, this one caught my attention. Mm -hmm. um, so it, uh, oh sorry, so it's uh so this is the Difford's guide, uh, and they uh, so I can use this to 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 mix drinks. It doesn't matter what it is, but. If you look at it, it's 23 pounds, right? Uh, and if you look at the Swedish uh, price for the same uh, same bottle, the exact same bottle, 20 and 23, 23 pounds. That all that's like 280 crowns or something like that. No, I think that one pound is 14 crowns, so it's it's close yeah, to 300. And if you look at the Swedish price, it's 153, 153. <laughs> so it's half price for the same exact bottle. Yeah. Um, I mean, when the Swedish, it should be noted for international viewers, uh, the Swedish system is run by its monopoly, it's state run. Yeah. And uh, when they come knocking at wine producers uh, anywhere in the world, you know, they can buy up an entire stock. So it's very interesting to basically have a guaranteed sale of everything you make. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. you lower the prices. Uh, yeah. And this is yeah. one of the more unusual uh, stuff. Yeah, uh, cool. So so you can you, you actually need to order it, pre-order it. Um, and, and then they will send it out to your uh, to your store, and you can pick it up in like what seven days or something. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's that's pretty cool yeah. actually. That's pretty cool. Right. So enough about, about right. the booze. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> not enough about booze. More about code. I mean, we have we have two things on our plates today. We haven't streamed in a while. I don't know, Thomas. You picked up the Slack a little bit uh, last week yeah, as I was away. Um, but we want to uh, look at a pull request that we ended with that we didn't, we haven't merged yet uh, during the last stream. Mm -hmm. And I've also on the train because I took the train all the way down from Sweden to Portugal, been coding on a little application that I haven't shown Thomas yet. So I would like to do that. Mm -hmm. And it's already grown, kind of. It's it's a bit messy, but it's okay. Um, but more, most the most interesting part, I think, will probably be about um, user uh, authentication uh, because that is up and running. Uh, the application, uh, you know, we'll post links to it. It's it's in public repos. Uh, it's deployed. Uh, so I'm going to send you a link first of all, Thomas, and see if you can create an account. It's probably not going to work, but we'll try. So um, uh, curious as I am, I want to go for that first. So I, you know, yeah, I think we should do that first. Yeah, let's let's do the fun stuff first, and then yeah. we're gonna uh, we're gonna review this PR. We're gonna merge this PR, and then we're gonna talk a little bit, which is the the, the, the main topic of this of of this session is about user authentication. How we can implement that into our mm -hmm. into our applications, um, but also uh, from a perspective of testing. So how can we kind of you know, on our client yeah. side, pretend that we already have user authentication um, uh, configured yeah. and set up, so that we can continue to develop our our um, our features. Um, mm -hmm. All right, send, send me send me a link, or do you want to? Yeah, let's share your screen, perhaps. Uh, yeah, you can share my screen for yeah. a second. Um, there we go. There we go. Um, so I called it morning pages. Um, it's um, it's a uh, Rails API backend, uh, React frontend, uh, and it's basically uh, inspired by this self-help book from the 70s called The Artist's Way. Uh, one of the aspects of that self-help book is that you're supposed to write these morning pages by hand every morning. So this is just a simple 
kind of first step, uh, rapid application development to, to get that up and running. Now, to tell you the truth, let's see if it's actually deployed. Let me get a, uh, let me get a little, oh, that's not right. Let me head over to my GitHub um, and let's go to the client. And I think I put a few, yeah, so I've, I've put in some continuous integration, uh, the same the same way that we did our stream earlier. Now, I'm not using Semaphore CI to actually run it. I'm using GitHub Actions. We can have a look at those configuration files. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, but we have a Netlify success here. So if I click on that, I get to my Netlify account, which gets me to the actual URL. See, there's a failed deploy here. Um, but this is what it looks like on the first load. Okay. Uh, so it's not style at all. Um, Thomas made fun of me because I started writing this uh, using Tailwind CSS. And you were right. <laughs> it was a pain. So I, uh, I migrated away from it and changed from Tailwind to, um, to using uh, Semantic React, uh, which is more of a component, a CSS component yeah. library rather than, uh, than a, you know, class-based um, yeah. building your own components from scratch. So, you know, it's going to look very much like a semantic site. I don't personally care that much uh, as long as it works. Uh, but the first thing I want to do before we do anything is just have a look at my uh, local storage um, because I see that I actually have a token here. Um, so what I want to do is just clear uh, my local storage. Um, and I can make sure, oh, no, I have to run that as a function. There we go. Can I now make sure, yes, there's nothing in local storage. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to do a force reload on this. Um, now, the, uh, the one user on this account, because this is just a test app or in development, is uh, a classic. Um, you can probably guess what the password is because it's no. about to yell at me. <laughs> um, yes, I know it's not secure. Anyway, we have some little toast notifications. We have 12 themes. You can head over here and something went wrong. Uh, not right. sure where that is, but you can, you can create, um, a title and well, I don't want to do that. No gaps. The body, choose one of the themes. This is. Uh, oh, so right, there so... must be a put. There's something wrong with your API, probably, at the moment. Right? Yeah, I, I imagine if that's, you look at, yeah. that's the case. Let's look at the network calls here, which I can do under network. Um, let me reload this just to see. So it's getting a 401. So I, may, maybe the, the user that I actually used here um, uh, has... Well, that. check the check the payload first. <clears throat> oh, no, yeah, you know what? Check the headers, perhaps. Uh, sorry. Yeah, the let's see if they actually... Uh, let's see. So this is the response headers. I want my request headers. Right. It did... Okay, so you know what? I think maybe... You're not including the... Uh... Yeah, this doesn't have the headers, but however, my uh, my application actually does. I just probably haven't merged in the latest thing. So let's head into Cypress to look at our. Uh... Hmm. I saw that it failed a build there just now. So if I do git log log dash dash one line, I actually do have a commit here somewhere that says adds headers to morning page CRUD actions. Uh, that was 06982FF. Let's go back to GitHub just for yeah, a second. See if it's deployed. Because this thing. Oh, it failed to deploy. Well, this is a, um, this is a, a work in progress pull request. Oh, okay, so that's okay, fine. Gotcha. Uh, but this is the production, see? And, and that's, um, you know, that really should have gotten the headers. Let me show you how it's done. Um, let me show you how it's done. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Let's open VS Code here. And let, let me know if I need to make this 
bigger or small. It's okay for me. I can see. Yeah, it's okay for you. Okay. Um, so I have not really organized the components, but basically, you know, in this source, we have some modules to help us out. And in the morning page service, you know, we have the classic index show, create, update, and delete. Mm -hmm. Nothing strange here. Um, I uh, set inside this object, I set the headers as, as one of the keys. Um, this mm -hmm. works quite well, I, just to avoid some code repetition, uh, where it grabs um, the, uh, the token from local storage, it parses it. And this means that inside, when I need to send along the headers, um, which I do for almost anything, yeah. I pass it along like this, right? Yeah. This dot headers. And that, it's working fine. Are you sure um, that the guy, that the uh, the item is called JTOC of storage? Are you sure about that? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Could you check that? I I can check it. Uh, I'll check it on the live one um, because we did log in. So let's head over to the console. Let's do a little window local storage JTOC of dash storage. I mean, here, you know, yeah, we yeah, can do yeah. this. Uh, yeah, we can yeah, just okay. copy this to be absolutely sure. Copy that and run it. And you see, there it is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so that's okay. Yeah. Um, there, there's something else going on, I'm afraid, but we'll, we'll, we'll sort that out in a second. Um, and are fact, you making, yeah, and are you making the, I, is, is the, okay, so is the URL properly? access is is it set in 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 end variables so you're making call it is set in it's set in end variables um it's not a big secret but yeah it's the react app uh, api url morning pages heroku app it's possible that i need to reseed well uh, but check your net not netlify setting have you set that because because on netlify you don't use those end variables Oh, I do. Um, I well, you, but you have to set. You, 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 sorry, I, I, I phrased it uh, incorrectly. I mean, you don't use, use yeah. the .n file. That's what I'm saying. So you have. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. It. But but you have to. Here, I'll show you. The, I basically you do it. Uh, is it in deep add-on? Uh, where is the it? Site they... right. build and deploy. Maybe build and deploy, repo, build settings, branches, depot period of build books, depot keys, environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's here. Okay. Uh, and I, I can show you. I mean, I, this right, is it. Okay, yeah, okay. morning page is yeah, it. Okay. But I think, you know, what I think maybe has happened is that the, um, just the Heroku has reset or something. Like I, um, I did a little bit of work on the API yesterday and I merged some code. And I probably need to log into Heroku and create uh, this. Uh, but I was able to log in successfully. Hmm. You know. Um, could you could you show me the is it yeah I, you know uh, could, could you could you show me the code for the for the controller that is taking that is working with this with this um, or you know um, yeah. handling that that incoming request. I'm sure it can. Um, because it is weird that it says unauthorized. It should. Uh... So I'm using device talk off here. Probably doesn't come as a surprise. Um, let's open up the controller. I already had it open. So for morning pages, we authenticate on index show, create and destroy. Um, you know that I've not implemented an update action here yet. Yeah, so you can um, once you do that, and if it if it's if it needs to be, you know, before action on everything, you don't even need that only later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, okay. Uh, anyway, so so I, I'm I'm not entirely sure, but I suspect the fact that we're getting this, the fact that well, we can see that in our we saw that in our network, it's not being included, so that points us to. Um, uh, let me look again at the request headers. Uh, indeed, there is no token here, uh, which makes me think, well, the first thing I'm kind of tempted to do is to just trigger a, a deploy again, because I, 
Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry. Or, well, um, look, we can sort it out now, but um, here, let me also just share this with you because I'm curious that you've never visited this application before. Um, in the meantime, I just want to see if I can, you know, you may have noticed I don't have a logout uh, functionality built in. Um, but I hit this validate token. Um, actually, this, this brings us to the thing I wanted to show you. Notice that on initial load, um, we, um, on initial load, we do this validate token. The way that's done is that in our uh, JSX, uh -huh. when we load the page, there's a use effect, right? Yeah. It looks for a token uh inside of local storage if it finds one it does this authentication validate token uh, mm -hmm. service which you know we do have um an auth js module in which which is grabbing things from this jtalk auth uh, dependency um it has sign in yeah, sign yeah, up yeah. And, but, but, and validate token yes but but, but 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 look at what's happening here like um this validate token when I on initial load, um, user add email, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's see, in the request headers, it's interestingly not sending a token, it's going to be in the body, right? Yeah, no, it should be in headers. Oh, no, no, okay, it's in the body. No, 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 this is this is validate token, right? Yeah. So we're just sending a token in with an email and presumably yeah. a device is sending back to us. Yes, that one is okay with that email. Yeah. Um, and and you now have access to... So you should go to pages. preview. You, you need to see what, what, what did you get back. Yeah, yeah. I got back... Uh, you know, I don't get the token back, I guess. No, no, but just, that's the body, but, but should, yeah. check the response headers. Pick the wait, not the request headers, but the response ones, the, the one that you are getting back. So that should be on the first page. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, you get the access token there. Yeah, yeah, okay, now, okay. So, so you get that. Yeah, and as I understand it now, uh, JTalk off automatically will store that in local storage. Yeah, um, which is because... apparently happening because you, you get that in, in local storage, right? So, yeah. Um, good. But so, so when I hit the themes, you don't need, to, there's no authentication needed for that. But morning pages and new morning page, there is, uh, oh, sorry, create new morning page, there is. Uh, oh, oh, now it's working. Look at that. Oh, it is. Okay, let me, try. yeah, okay. It's just uh, acting weirdly. So test again, test, test, choose a theme, save this. The page was saved to the database and it takes a little while. I need to speed that up. That's very frustrating. But this is going to update very shortly, I hope. Things are going very slowly over in Heroku land. There it is. OK. So um, clearly, you understand that I'm not saving this list uh, in application state, but rather just on the server yeah. right now. Um, so here you can right now again only the delete action exists and see if it works yeah ah look at that the test has been deleted but it's still there uh for a while i think i think i should do this in application state i should migrate away from there it is now it's gone um so um that's a very quick thing right you can just save a little note uh according to what was on theme um and uh, yeah, that's kind of where we're at. Um, that's awesome. But it's, uh, it's been fun building it. But I especially, you know, I mean, uh, aside from this uh, updating problem with, with it looking at, uh, looking at the server instead of uh, the Redux store, um, 
the actual logging in, you know, I had not really done this before looking for the token, mm -hmm. uh, you know, storing current user, but, but if you peek slightly on the lines below here, you can immediately note, no, okay, so container is just a styling mm -hmm. thing. That's to give it a little bit of margin on the sides. Uh, and then we have a navigation bar on top that's always there. And then it looks for current user. And of course, current user is set in state. So what happens here on load is that when authentication validate token runs, which mm -hmm. brings us in here, right? It tries to run the validation and then it dispatches the current user um, into application state, which yeah. in turn uh, then let's head back to app JSX, which in turn then shows us all these React router, um, yeah. or gives us access to all these React router um, paths. Uh, yeah. And one thing that I also did for the first time that I hadn't really used before, which I'm absolutely in love with, is uh, using the nested routes. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, this route is wrapped, uh, the morning page ID is wrapped inside of morning pages, which very nicely, uh, you know, brings us, you see the URL, there's morning pages slash one. Yeah. I don't need to worry about putting slashes or anything. Ra React router Yeah, because you wrap it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, create is also wrapped inside, yeah. which allowed me. Well, uh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Morning, no, it's morning, but one later morning. below. Yeah, yeah. And you know what's really cool about this is that I figured out a way to have a single morning page form that works for both update and create. Okay, you know, you can talk me through this in just a second. We got a we yeah. got a question here from uh, one of our uh, Twitch users. Uh, there is an interesting tweet that says every use effect can be turned into a custom hook. Uh, what do you think about it? A, haven't seen the tweet. B, uh, yes, every use effect can be turned into a custom hook. Uh, yeah. Um, and I would say as soon as you find yourself in a situation where you reuse the same, uh, same use effect in, in more than one component, then you should mm -hmm. probably extract it, and custom hooks is a is a fantastic um, fantastic way to to um, encapsulate functionality. You know, extract things mm -hmm. from from your components and encapsulate that in in custom hooks. And I, I think that the ability, I mean, the, the the thing that they allowed us to create custom hooks, the the the, the core team on React, is is uh, speaks highly of them. I think it's really good because that it, it you know the way I look at it, they adhere to the uh, concept of dry do not repeat yourself uh, you know and mm -hmm. they, they give us that possibility so uh, i think that if we find ourselves i mean if in this particular case or in in the art nouveau project uh, that we reuse some um, uh, some functionality in the use effect then we should definitely uh, uh, yeah. work in with extracting that i don't think we're going to do it today though uh, uh, but but we will definitely take that into account that i think it's a great idea yeah. Right. Yeah. It also, I mean, it, it can just clean up your uh, your your uh, components because one th one thing I've really been bashing my head on the wall in this is I've hooked up Code Climate to this, mm -hmm. and Code Climate gives you a failing grade, not a failing grade, but penalizes you if your uh, file, not in counting the imports, but if the length of your file is over twenty five lines, you know, um, so. You know, this is definitely subject to refactor. It's way too long. Um, but uh, again, the use effects that are used in this application are very similar to, you know, well, well componented mount in, uh, mm. in, in class components, um, with one exception, which I also quite liked and plays very nicely with React Router, which is in the individual morning page uh, component of show action, basically you'll see that this use effect is dependent on the morning page ID, which we're using use params, which is in a way a custom hook. It's a, it's a hook yeah. written for React Router, um, but it very cleanly uh, grabs, you know, uh, you see this morning page ID, where is this coming from? What am I be constructing here? Well, if you look in app JSX, you'll see that, you know, it's yeah. got a little, little colon in front of it tells React Router, this is going to be a, a route param, basically. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, and it's a really nice way of, of forcing a component to, uh, uh, well, I mean, it's it's React, so it's only going to re-render what I'm telling it to re-rendering, but, but here it's going to hit the API again, uh, grab the new one, and then populate the title and the body down here, yeah. which is just very handy, very handy. Cool. Uh, but the head mode, I wanted to show off, Thomas, the, the morning page form, right? This thing is used to create a new, um, to create a new morning post, mm -hmm. diary entry, basically. Mm -hmm. um, but you can also use it to update. So I ran into trouble, as one does, because uh, React uh, distinguishes between the notion of a controlled and, and uh, a not controlled uh, input field. Mm -hmm. The way around this in order to uh, to address the warnings you're getting in the terminal when you start dealing with value for input fields, it's not such a big deal with the drop down ch choosing the theme, mm -hmm. uh, which I've made into its own component. Uh, but for these text inputs, which also live in their own mm -hmm. component here, I, you know, I was starting to set value because I needed to um, in edit mode, I needed to fetch, uh, I needed to populate it with the actual text of the existing morning page, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the way you get around it is just grab grab it as a default value, set, set it to default value. Yeah. Default value doesn't mess with whether or not an input is controlled. Uh, you don't want it to be controlled because uh, if you do it the wrong way, the user is not going to be able to write anything into it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the value is set programmatically here. The, the the input field will be populated with exactly the content you want, mm -hmm. but the user is free to to change it in any way, shape, mm -hmm. or form. And yeah, uh, you know, That's great. I mean, That's cool. yeah, just uh, you know. That's 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 good. I, I've run into some issues with that before, so that's a, that's a, yeah, that's a nice. So, uh, but so, so you, you know, know if ed, if you're and, in edit mode, then okay, 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 gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I originally, I, I was very proud of myself. It totally broke, but uh, but for a second it worked. I used something called use context. So one thing I wanted to show you, I mean, having a good time with React Router, but when you, and there's a gotcha, when you, let's go back to app.jsx, where are you there? When you use nested routes in React Router, mm -hmm. Uh, when you link to the new URL or, or you use navigate programmatically to tell React Router, okay, now we're moving on to this URL, the page won't just render, the component won't just render. What you need to do in the parent component is include this outlet. Outlet is a, um, is a um, React Router uh -huh. uh, object that, um, that uh, populates uh, with uh, the child, basically, uh, uh -huh. the nested uh, component. Now, I was hoping to send in some props into Outlet first to send in edit mode, right? Because uh -huh. uh, I thought, edit mode, it's really just for the morning page form. Should I really store it in application state? That feels a bit ridiculous. Uh, so I, I wrote this um, uh, another, I mean, it's custom hook use context mm -hmm. uh, and you can pass in uh, basically uh, you know if I had edit and set edit in, uh, in uh, using use state using component state mm -hmm. I was able to pass it in here but since this outlet is used twice once in morning pages and mm -hmm. once in morning page here mm -hmm. it is um, things fall apart uh, ah. and all of a sudden using but couldn't you but well but couldn't you create a create wrap this in in your own component? Do you understand? Like, uh, you know, you could you could you could extract outlet into your own component. Do you understand? And then passing the prop yeah, that, I do. Based yeah. on that prop, you you render it. You know. Yes, but I would need then to set edit mode and set edit mode. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll experiment. You know what that. I mean? It's like like you yeah. just you create your own component. You call it custom outlet. You know, yeah. And that custom mm -hmm. outlet would would take a prop or not, or have mm -hmm. a default prop, right? Uh, and then, but but, yeah. But 
what's nice about this, I mean, now these components are organized, not at all, as you mm -hmm. can tell, but what is nice about this is that eventually, you know, I'm just going to have a directory called morning pages where there'll basically be, you know, a show action, da, 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 da. it's going to reflect yeah, yeah, very yeah. much what's happening. And what it hopefully will look like, you know, it's kind of similar to this, um, kind of recreating this nesting. And I'm, what I'm worried is that as you immediately, I could hear you react to this when I said, look, they're nested. Create is also nested. Of course, create is nested after just morning pages. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not morning pages, then an ID and then create. And mm -hmm. because they live at different levels, the custom component would need to wrap, I guess, outside of morning pages. I, I just... What I'm worried about is that when we decide what to render in the tree um, and, the, and the DOM tree, like um, we're going to run into a world of hurt that I think we're avoiding by relying on application state mm. for edit mode. But well, uh, yeah. I will experiment a bit. Maybe maybe I can be convinced otherwise. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but so so show me show me you know of course you you test some tests this, right. Yeah. yeah, I did. Uh, yeah. So let's fire up old Cypress. This is the API. So let's not fire up Cypress there. Um, let's go to the client and fire up old Cypress here. And if you note also, I've passed in some flags here, including the end to end and Chrome flag, so that in Cypress 10, I can save myself a few clicks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, which is good. Meaning that yeah. it's always good to save yourself clicks. Um, and there you see it, dash dash E2E. Yep. Goes into end to end testing mode, dash V Chrome, means I don't have to manually choose the Chrome browser. Uh, ba -ba so the test suite, it grew quite a bit. <laughs> oh, it did. Um, oh, yes, it did. Right. It did. Um, and um, I've also done the little all hack uh, mm -hmm. that we talked about when we first started looking at the Cypress 10 two weeks ago. And so let's run all and see what we get. Now, as we're sitting here talking, I realized I didn't add in a stub for a uh, validate token. So, right. Uh, Right, so that's actually like this, some... this this test suite is actually doing something on the internet right now, but we can fix that in GitHub uh, uh, actions quite easily. Um, yeah, and I tried to be disciplined and, and put in sad paths as well for uh, for most things. I mean, I don't know if you if you were uh, looking when I showed you the the auth uh, module, but there's. Um, I got a bit lazy. The error handler basically just right now is saying, "Hey, something went wrong," mm. uh, uh, and you know that's subject to to refactor. But as you say, we will always run out of time or money, right? Yeah. Uh, so right now it's it's perfectly okay. I I, I like my little loading screen too. Oh, yeah, which yeah, I, it's good. It's good. Which I added, you know, that and, and testing for that. Oh, I got to show off in a second. Testing yeah. for the loading screen is very annoying because Cypress Intercept, right, mm. is a godsend. It makes life very easy for developers uh, to test what you get back after mm -hmm. an API call. But what if you want to test something during an API call, <laughs> like a loading well, screen? It's uh, let me let me let me, let me let me guess. Let me guess. There is a yeah. delay. There is a delay uh, setting on on intercept. Why you think I'm some kind of amateur? You think I use C dot wait and delay it? No, 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 no. It's way more. But I, I thought that the the, the uh, so so the intercept itself uh, can, can take, can, delay, can take yes. options, right? Yeah, which was my first solution. And then when I ran it in continuous integration, the test failed. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, or it passed, it failed, it depended a little bit. So, so, so passing delay is, I think, is not the right. It's not a programmatic uh, way of testing for the loading screen. OK, so uh, how, did you, is, how did you solve it? There yeah. is another solution, not Skywalker sibling. Um, and you're just going to have to be a little patient until we have run through all these tests. <laughs> yeah, okay, so we're done now. Yeah. Uh, and we're good. all agreed. So let's let's head over back to the code. We're in the client. Let's close all the folders and let's dive into Cypress. So E2E is the new directory, right? Mm -hmm. um, and user can see loader. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Are you ready for this? Are you sitting down? 
Um, very simple test, looks ugly as hell, uh, yeah. but I didn't want to obfuscate this using Cypress Actions. I wanted it to, because I want to reuse this because it was really hard to figure out. Uh, but basically I do a little visit themes. What this visit themes does just, it sets the, um, uh, the intercept for the initial load of the page, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then I have another action here, which is sign in. Uh, that one just grabs the input fields, fills out the, the account, and sends it off. Right? Oh, it uses the uh, interface. So, uh, okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. yeah, you see what it's doing. So I'm still using intercept, but if you give intercept um, a uh, a function, mm -hmm. um, basically this is regress stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I think you know many other testing libraries. Uh, use this 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 um, formula in order to be able to give access to you, the tester, for the request and the response, right? Mm -hmm. And so, what you can see here is that uh, you know on rec, uh, we basically we initialize some variable. We call mm -hmm. it resolve rec, uh, and then we have this callback, which just returns a promise, um, which in turn. <laughs> Um, takes an argument. Uh, yeah, of, the resolve. Yeah, you know, because resolving the, resolve the promise. Reject, yeah, on the promise. Uh, yeah, and so choose. all of a sudden, you know, if you call this, then you resolve it. So um, and then you get, you know, it's a dot. Then that's a, you know, I can. Look yeah, at yeah, that and then the you rec 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 Yeah, test. so this means that uh, on line on line ten, you are just storing the resolve uh, function function yeah. in in uh, in the resolve reg okay gotcha gotcha yeah which means that you know i sign in and then this intercept kicks in right yeah uh and it's basically going to be waiting for resolve rec to be called yeah uh and which means that we here very happily have all the time in the world to test anything we for want whatever you're doing yeah. right Right. Yeah. And so, you know, I have loader container, I, the naming we can discuss, but uh, basically I'm checking that it's like, because I did write in the word loading myself. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't even need to pass this in, right? Um, I guess I, I left it in just because I. Why not? I, I wonder. Oh, because you, okay, okay. For, for this, uh, particular, you know, I, okay, for this particular gonna, test, um, you don't want to. So, you know, so, the assertion is here, right? Okay, um, so so then, well, well, you could potentially add another line and say, "See, I get uh, data, you know, CI yeah. loader should not exist or something," you know. Do you understand? Right. Actually, that's quite nice. Um, well, no, no, you can. Uh, yeah, I don't want to chain too many things, but I could do that here, right? Oh, you can just no. Well, you can actually say uh, and. Uh, well, no, and no, no, you can't, uh, no, no, you can't, no, 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 yeah. no, you just, you need to see I get again. Yeah, and now I, uh, did I delete that I shouldn't have deleted, there we go. Right. Uh, and I'll do a, a data at CY, loader, container, and then we'll say, show, then is it just not exist? Not exist, right. But yeah. Yeah, I think uh, so. We'll just code try to see if that. Run, run and oh, yeah. so let's go back to this guy. We'll head over and just run this, of course. See what we get. Yeah, and we went green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so um, that's good. That's that's. It's good for you that you are resolving this because then, then you're actually saying, yeah. yeah I look. I see the loader. Then we resolve the request. I don't mm -hmm. see the loader, and that's uh, mm -hmm. that's you know you could potentially store store the data CY loader container in a, in a variable so you don't repeat that. But that doesn't. It would oh, yeah. Add yeah, yeah, yeah. Add. I mean, look, you know, one thing we should talk about. Uh, look at all these commands I've written, right? Yeah. Uh, and this is all to make the tests cleaner, and and they do. But good lord, you know, this is a this is a rabbit hole. You can really. Because now every time I write more, I'm sort of like, oh, I should split these up. You know, these are doing too many things. Uh, right. And right. I think so, so. So you know, we did, we did the this stream about page object and custom commands, and 
Yeah. And yes, it, it is a rabbit hole. However, uh, the alternative is that you will have all the all this in inside of your test. But as you say, a review of all these uh, these pipe jumpers yeah. or custom commands from time to time is called called for, uh, so that you it create uh, uh, make them cleaner and so. But every time you create a, a domain specific language, which is basically you know create encapsulating test functionality or, or your own functionality into in, in, into some, some, some functions or objects like like our commands like we're doing here. Uh, there's a danger uh, w with doing too many things and, and creating a little bit of a mess right on, on that. Um, so yeah. without going no, to no, showing I... you some code, but I know that you know in, in so several applications you when, when we use with Cucumber, which is a, uh, um, a framework that, you know, works with um, high level uh, scripting and lower level step definitions. And those step definitions can, can become very cumbersome to maintain. We have uh, an application with thousands of step definitions, uh, which is are specific for that particular application, which makes it really, really hard to work with. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I understand what you're feeling, but there's, um, I think this is better to have, like you have it right now, than, than include everything in the tests. Uh, oh, oh, absolutely, for, for sure. Um, for sure. I, I just, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that I think as, you know, I mean, Cypress growing in popularity, so much time invested by lots of talented people, I, I sort of foresee uh, standards for writing these custom actions mm -hmm. uh, or commands, and uh, sorry, I keep calling them actions, they're commands. Um, and I guess going forward, and then when I'm going to sit down and refactor this, I'm going to think about, you know, uh, what could those standards be, and uh, mm -hmm. how can we, uh, mm -hmm. uh, how can we use some logic so that yes, I know it's domain specific, but I feel like. Um, uh, some some best practices are going to emerge. Mm -hmm. uh, One know, thing that strikes me, like I mean, you have a, a I've experienced this before myself. A massive amount of code repetition in the CI get right because yeah. now that we if we only or or if we in a specific project um, uh, always use uh, data CY just that then. It, it, it kind of feels redundant to always have to use those hard brackets and data CY equal. Uh, perhaps yeah. we could even override the, the custom CI get to just, you know, whatever we pass in, uh, that's mm -hmm. the, um, that's data CY. Do you understand? And sometimes yeah. in some corner cases, you would say, well, perhaps I need to, to use a class or Escape perhaps I use an ID. Yeah, yeah. Well, then you can create this, uh, this function with, with, for instance, taking another argument. Uh, and mm -hmm. you just say, you know, uh, some a string and then comma and then ID, right? Then we would yeah. you could you could use an ID or class if you want to use class or name or whatever, right? Uh, so so uh, and that would like save that. us a lot of time uh, or a lot of well typing, I would say, right? Yeah, uh, because we always use yeah, because anyway. and we all you know it's like that last square bracket because the minute you open up a string, you know, you don't get the free the second uh, right. hard bracket when you're typing, so. Uh, Exactly. I don't know. Exactly. We have yeah. reviewed a lot of exams and submissions that. Right, right. And I've been guilty of it myself too. To you know, to forget. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. Uh, oh, and of course, Cypress is smart enough that it works uh, without it. Unfortunately. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, yeah. Anyway. Awesome. That's great. Great. Uh, yeah. So, so if you switch back to this, you can see loader um, f uh, file. Let me just. So you're doing the intercept. You're passing in a callback as a second argument with a with a function. And you create a, a Cypress promise that only mm -hmm. resolves, and you store it. That's a beautiful solution. Uh, now, credit, only, where, only... credit where credit is due. Uh, I think they're actually working on uh, on a way to do this uh, without this workaround. Uh, so we may well, see. Uh... But I do have a question. So on line twelve, you give it an you are giving it an alias, a sign in. Yeah, um, that's a remnant of when I was trying to figure out how I could do this with Cypress Wait. Um, I don't need the sign-in uh, 
areas. Yeah, so here. because I'm curious, if you would remove this alias, and also mm -hmm. if you remove the, uh, because the sign in function is a, is a cu custom command, right? I I kind of sense uh, like a conflict in naming here because you gave it an alias, and then you have a function or a custom command called sign in. So it. Let's yeah. just make sure that in the custom command called sign in, there's no Cypress wait. But I don't think there is. Here it is. Yeah, no, it just fills out the form and clicks. Right. So it's this one at least it's appropriately. Okay. So you don't you don't need that that alias. Okay, I got it. Okay, I got it. So so this should work, right? If you just check if it's passing. Yeah, so let's head over here and below the test. And that's very annoying. Um Yeah, and then the results. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. So, so, yeah. so I have another question. That I mean, if, is, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I, I was just going to say that, like, the, the point of doing it this way is that this is going to work in continuous integration. It's going to work headlessly. Uh, is is the real big kicker, right? Because yeah, you can sort it out with uh, delays, but uh, once you remove the visual browser, you know, uh, there's no guarantee that's going to work. Okay. Which is yeah. interesting. Why? Right. So, so. Because the way I see it, the, the, the commands in Cypress should work flawed. I mean, should have, a, should have the same behavior whether you run your tests headed or headless, right? Uh, yeah, but, but I mean, I think the documentation, I don't think, spells this out. Though correct me if I'm wrong, Internet. Uh, but I think the documentation says, you know, don't delays and see why dot wait that waits for a certain set of time and the aliases is a bit of an anti pattern and should be avoided mm -hmm. uh, whenever possible. And I am guessing that this is the motivation. But again, I, I, that, that's a lot of guesswork. We're supposed right. to figure these things out, right? Well, that's going to be added to the bucket list for, yeah. for <laughs> you know, to research. Uh, I have another question then about this one. So, so once the user is authenticated, um, so you store everything, you st store the headers in, in local storage, right? But are you also storing uh, the information about the user in application state anywhere? I am. Right. Um, so I, I, I won't dive into JTalk off right now, but they, uh, you know, if we go into our node modules and, and down to JTalk off, yeah. we can see them stored in local storage. That's fine. Uh, what I do uh, is that I have a, um, a module uh, called OpsDS, uh, where I'm instantiating a new JTalk off class. I'm setting the API URL. Uh, it doesn't need a prefix because it's an API only, so I don't have a slash API or anything, or a V1, maybe I should, but that's for later. Um, and then I grab these sign in, uh, sign up, and validate token because I want to tweak them a little bit, right? Um, yeah, so you're just I monkey patching them, basically. Um, yeah, and it's you, just you use the same, right? You use the same uh, naming convention, so I got it, got it. Yeah, and then so, but I store that in an object called authentication. Um, yeah. And here is where things get a little uh, boogie, right? So in our try, for example, when we sign in, um, it uh, loads open a toast, and then uh, as it opens, it it fires off these two uh, stored dispatches and set current user is the the big one so let's head over to see what set current user does right well hold on before you do that so what you're yeah. saying is that your dispatch is dependent on the on the toast to to uh, i know i i don't I, this yeah I, this is a remnant this is a little bit of a cargo called coding from from my own uh coding history so uh, I, I liked very much that the toasts, you know, they can, uh, the, the, this this version of React Toastify has uh, the functionality to run things on open yeah. and on close, yeah. uh, which, you know, I think that I fell in love with it when I was using, I was redirecting the user or something. Once they had logged in, uh, there was a little bit of time, the toast yeah, pops open, you, when it closed, yeah. it sends off something yeah. and then yeah. it sends them to another place. It's not really necessary here, right? Uh, I could just move these uh, to to. Sorry, I could just move these down, and um, well, they do need to be inside the try. Um, 
and it would be fine. In fact, if we scroll down. No, no, I don't. I don't mind that. I think it's it's great. But the 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 problem I see, I well, you know, it's just a gut feeling. I don't know. Yeah. What if the toast stops yeah. working? That's this. This means that, okay, I'm not displaying anything to the user, which isn't good, right? It's not a good UX. But yeah. apart from that, my entire app also breaks. That's you know? a really good point. Um, yeah. Because if the toaster malfunction, in mm -hmm. you know, for some reason, you can yeah. still just go on if you don't, you know, don't 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 depend on that on open uh, function or event, but. I, again, I don't, I don't mind that. If it works, it works, right? Uh, yeah. No, uh, but, but you're right. I mean, I think uh, if anything, I mean, when you start following the human hacker news or, or whatever about different uh, NPM uh, yarn dependencies, you learn that sometimes these people who maintain open source projects, you know, they, they're not remunerated. They're under a lot of stress. Things can go wrong. Yeah. Uh, so the more resilient you build your app, uh, the better, of course. Gotcha. Um, so I, no, I'm in agreement. Uh, but uh, you know, we wanted to see where it actually uh, what this does set current user right. So that would be living in state and in features, and in features there's an auth slice. Um, yep. Auth slice. Hello, auth slice. Um, when you run set current user as a reducer. Uh, state action. This looks like more old school uh, Redux. Uh, it simply grabs the current user variable and it stores the payload in there. So, right. Right. Situ. Um, situ. So we comes to the moment of truth. Then, uh, do you are you including a test for for that in your end-to-end uh, -end test? Do you remember we did that the other day, a uh, week? The other yeah. Week? You know, um, it's store, you know, do you have this hack about if this is Windows Cypress and then the store is bound to the window object? I might. Um, so show, show me the index you, yes, first. Yeah, I, oh no, I definitely have this. Okay, hack. good. Yeah. Right. And in the test, um, when you, when you, when you uh, authenticate, let's say, yeah. So what are we um, having here? Contain where can the morning pages sign in? Just insert da, 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 da. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not actually testing for it being stored uh, in local storage. Obviously, it, that test would fail because um, that's sure. done by a component. I mean, that's done by JTOK auth, and I'm not right. going to write tests. But for, no, 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 no. I, I wouldn't say you don't have to check the, the, the local storage, although you could potentially. But I should yeah. be checking the. Um, yeah. So if you just switch to my screen yeah. for just a second, so yeah, this sure. kind of 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 test that we we wrote, mm -hmm. well, we yeah, wrote no, this for I, the I'm projects, uh, but you could potentially yeah. write something like that for the for the current user. You just invoke yeah. the get get state, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not saying I that it's super, yeah. again a disclaimer. This is this is borderline component test. Um, yeah. Although you know, I w I've been thinking about this, and that's why I'm asking you about about this thing because I, I've gave this mm -hmm. a little bit of thought um, over our extended break in streaming. You know, you still think about coding, um, yeah. and I was like, you know, should it or should not? Be, shouldn't should should it be there or is it you know too borderline component testing? Should we just you know? <laughs> And I was like, well, this, you know, the way I, I see it, I landed in a, that it should be there, you know, but, and the way I see it is because it is triggered by an action uh, made by the user, uh, which is the, you know, in this case, in my case that I'm show, showcasing on the screen, is just visiting the, the application. In your case, it's because he or she is, is typing in, um, you know, the, the or filling out the authentication form and sending it off. So it is a mm -hmm. user triggered um, event and that should uh, modify state of the of the of the app and that's why i think it it can uh, be justified to then, have this test but although now that i say it out loud it feels weird it's like if the state of the app changes can't you just test for what you expect the ui to display and i know of looking in i i totally yeah. agree so when yeah. we were writing this it felt natural mm -hmm. to have it as a part of the testing strategy because you were driving, you know, uh, you, you drive 
the development with test, right? So it was like, okay, let's intercept, uh, let's uh, let's visit, you know, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and it it is expected to make the API call. Well, we check mm -hmm. for that. This is also nothing to yeah, it has nothing to do with the UI per se, right? It just checks yeah. the you know what is actually going on, and then the next step is you know you store it in in application state, and then mm -hmm. the the last step is you know let's update the UI, and that's why you have this uh, uh, this this test kind of you understand? So yeah. let's yeah. make the call. Let's see if the application state has been updated. Let's see if the UI yeah. has been updated. So it kind of makes a uh, a logical flow in in yeah, a way, which is also flows, the way you it implement flows. it. Uh, you uh -huh. know. Um, uh, because it's dynamic data, you know, before you get the data, you can't really test the U UI. And so you have to take a few steps before before it happens. So that's mm -hmm. uh, that's my reasoning about that. I, and, but again, I oh. haven't, I'm not 100% sure if this is correct, but from a TDD perspective, it makes sense to me. Yes, absolutely. I agree with that. Um, yeah. Coolish. 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 Uh, yeah. Great job on this on this app. I think it's 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 fantastic, and you've come a long way. Must have been a long yeah. train ride. Yeah, it was, and uh, yeah, well, you, but you know what? Here's it's where like. you're gonna say, you no, get, no, no. When you get going, you're just like, you, should, you should you should say it was a very short train ride, but you know, it was it's a short a train ride, rapid application no development, and I'm fast as hell, you know. So, <laughs> uh, um, but it's you know, it's uh, code, you know, coding is. Uh, you learn by doing, and doing things you think you know will sometimes uh, reveal new lessons. Uh, and so, doing something like this is always worth it. Uh, you know, um, it's always worth it, and uh, and it's even better if you get to share it with others, which absolutely, you know, is, absolutely is, is the goal here. Uh, and so, yes, yeah. yeah so, so I us. thank you for that, and I, I picked up a few very interesting things. Definitely, this. Uh, Testing the loader thing is a, is a great takeaway. I think we should document this and then definitely yeah. uh, see if we can write a blog post or or, or mm -hmm. include that in mm -hmm. our course docs. Uh, this is a very good strategy or recipe. So uh, let's yeah. go with that. Uh, let's shift focus a little bit. And you know, since we are working a little bit on, we should be working on this art nouveau as well. You know, I know that this is your the morning papers is your passion uh, project. Um, we have this this art nouveau thing that we need to to carry on um mm -hmm. i'm dying to ask you about the rails api i just have to control myself let's let's not open up that Pandora. we'll do it, we'll do it uh, next time yeah. but it's uh it's extremely railsy you will be you will be pleased there's a lot of uh, before actions in the application awesome. 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 Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh let's see what can we do with this with this pr uh because we should probably merge this into um uh into the uh, the code base right um yeah let's see so here here's some pitfalls right oh sorry uh user can view a list of projects projects probably right a list of projects should we change this to plural yeah let's do that yes the um, problem here is that we have um uh, a, a description uh that is very very sparse very non-descriptive it made sense when we created it however this was like 11 12 days ago which yeah and 12 days is a damn eternity uh and now mm -hmm. uh we we can't really see what this pr is all about we i mean we can always understand you know we can re um, we can always assume that it's about, you know, as a user, when I visit the application, I want to see a list of projects. That's a fairly easy feature. But the lesson learned here is that we should always create a good uh, description of our pull requests um, with a user story so we can map everything that happens uh, yes. to, to that description, right? So uh, we were a little bit sloppy on that one. I'm just going to edit this uh, and perhaps just add and remember. This. GitHub is very markdown friendly. Yeah. So let's just do as a visitor, right? Uh, in order. No, when I visit the application, right? So that's what. Oh, but wait a minute. Isn't this in projects? Haven't we? 
Oh, did we? Okay. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And how do yeah. we? How do we link to? Yeah. Let's let's have a look. Music and see a list of art projects. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And look at that. Yeah. There so it go. works as an issue. But I, I'm kind of, I like to see it in the comment for the PR. Uh, but, uh, right. But I guess okay. it's in, so uh, if you open the PR, can you know we what link we can do? Somehow? I think we can do this. We can just copy this uh, URL. We can go to pull request. I can go to, to this one and in the description, mm -hmm. uh, I can just says, I can just say. Uh, address addresses mm. oh shit perhaps not that many s's i don't know what it is let's, okay. let's do this right address number three and that would automatically create a pop-up you know it links the um, oh yeah, yeah yeah it links the issue with the pr do you understand however mm. i wonder if you know, if you take this and if I, I can edit this comment uh, and we can say, see this, see this pull request that will also link the PR to mm -hmm. the, uh, to the issue. Do you understand? Yeah. So you can cross reference them this way. Okay. And, but anyway, this is good. If we can, add this a link to the issue or you know to the to the project thing into into the pr then we don't have to repeat ourselves uh, right and we get the description uh properly uh, done. yeah okay I... so that's good so we wanted to as a user in order to be able to choose an art project to join i would like to see a list of active projects that's the main objective and we have some tasks fetch project data from api store project data in state and display project data on load that's pretty straightforward right so are we doing that uh i think we are doing that uh yeah uh it is i mean of, yeah you know i you know this about me i when when we were going to merge in uh, anything that has to do with a visual component like UI or anything with the client. Uh, screen grabs are a nice thing uh, to, to include. Um, now it's so early days that maybe it's not necessary, but um, uh, but it's nice to to record your screen when you're running your tests, things like that. Um, yeah. It's very clear what you're trying yeah. to achieve. But again, yeah, you know, this is an index action. It's showing this yeah. things. It's and it's also not it. style and it's very basic. No. But yeah, yeah I, so I totally it'll agree. be a bit, a bit overkill for now, but we'll, we'll, we'll cover that in future yeah. streams for sure. Right. So in my opinion, these three tests are checking off the boxes. You know, we are mm -hmm. making us a, a, a request. We're making a get request to the, to the, uh, to the API. We are storing mm -hmm. it in state. We are displaying mm -hmm. it on the UI. However, mm -hmm. we do not have any error handlers. Uh, nope we do not so what what if the api is is non-responsive or uh or there are no projects in the database and so on yeah uh, you could always argue that uh we can fix it in in this pr or we can fix it later in a in a consequent pr the yeah, for instance the um the message saying oh there are no projects to watch could be a could be perceived as a feature in itself it doesn't necessarily have to be part of this story we could write a, a separate user story as a web developer yeah. you know if i want to join to see and there are no projects to join i want to see uh yeah, notice about that or something yeah so you could always claim that this is a a, a, a feature it would be out itself. of scope <laughs> yeah um and also uh, if technology fails us, meaning that the server is down or the API is non responsive or whatever, or you're offline or you, you go, go offline, that could also be a feature ish thing, you know. 
I'm yeah. just I'm just trying to make excuses for not writing more code on this PR. You know, um, I mean, whenever you debate whether or not something is in scope or out of scope of PR, I feel like it's always much easier to argue that it's out of scope. Right, but if you but do, then is the sad path out of scope? I don't know. No, no. <laughs> But what I would argue, <coughs> sorry, sorry, that if you if you go down the route, you mm -hmm. should. Well, you could go to projects, right? Where are we? No, uh, it's super annoying. There's there's actually a bug. If you go back to Craft Academy, you can't be inside Art Nouveau. It's um, now oh. you should see a project, but for some reason it doesn't show up when you're inside a particular repo. Oh, that's so why. weird. That's so yeah. weird. Anyway, yeah, what we should do is to add an item and we should say uh, user can well, user uh, can is see warned or, a message yeah. about uh, empty about no projects no yeah. projects being uh, available available is that even how you spell it uh -huh. perhaps uh, what do, what, what do I do now? Click plus? There, no, what do I do? Uh, <laughs> Am I zoomed in? What the f Come on. Uh, no, it's gone. <laughs> Damn it. You clicked You clicked that item, right? Yeah. Oh. I uh, just read test and hit the plus button to see. You know, it's edited. Oh, there was, there it was an enter, yeah. enter button. Right, so can I edit this? Yeah. Right, so I can edit it here. Yeah. All right. Uh, user can see message about no projects available, right? So we could do that. We can, you know, just see this as a draft. And then we could see uh, user should or can see message if network is uh, returning or, or is down or yeah we can always rephrase this yeah. later right yeah. but we should definitely have uh, have some stories about that right uh, I agree. but what I would like to do real quickly before we I mean, we've been at it for a while now right but you know we could see we can say something like this user can see read m like read more if no on on project project on project listing uh, but we can say authenticated right authenticated user can mm -hmm. read can see read more on project listing basically what we are what i'm arguing for yeah is uh let's see if we edit this we can say uh, as an authenticated user Mm -hmm. uh, in order to be able, able to get more in depth, can you say that? In yeah. depth info about mm -hmm. a oh. project. Uh, info sorry about the project i would like to i would like to uh i don't know see uh read more link mm -hmm. right beside uh, at, you know uh, yeah. for 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 each project right mm -hmm. yeah right okay and this is a very very simple thing right and my well, I, what I argue is that you can make it simple or you can make it really, really um, 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 you know, complicated. Complex. Yeah. yeah, complex. yeah. Uh, so what we need to do is to, we need to convert this to an issue, right? Uh, I'm still learning. Yeah. yeah. So on the Art Nouveau repository. Right. Uh -huh. Okay, good. Right. And it's an open thing. Right. So, uh, but before we we do this, I, I I would argue that we can merge this this uh, this oh, PR. Yeah. 
we have two projects or three projects uh, that are stubbed out we are storing things in in state we're displaying project by the way i saw that you were using divs instead of just empty fragments on some in some places on the morning pages are you sure yeah uh, yeah I, I, I used divs when I needed to assign a data CY uh, in order to grab my toast container, but uh, otherwise I use empty ones, I think. You sure? But I'll, I'll have a look over. Yeah, I'm pretty allergic to, to, um, to uh, use right. this divs. All right. I don't um, want to call you out. I think there was the The first one where you showed me that there was an output. Can you go? Can you navigate to that? Uh, yeah. Wait. So, um, of course, I fired up Art Nouveau, but hang on a second. Oh, here we go. Um, Perhaps I, I was I wasn't paying attention. Perhaps I'm totally off here. No, I may have to eat my words, but uh, let's see here. Uh, well, we can start an app because here I have divs, but I need I need this div. No, 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 you need that. That that you need. But the other one where, where there was this output thingy. Uh, oh yeah, okay. So that's in. Um, well, let's look at morning pages. Uh, oh yeah, there is yeah. a useless div there. Oh, but wait. Yeah, I, I can convert it to uh, to just uh, an empty fragment. Right. Why did exactly. I have a div there? Uh, it probably had a div CY during the development, and then I got lazy. So that's yeah. why I need a code reviewer, right? I can't review <laughs> this all by myself. No, that's the, the, those details. You know, sometimes. Yeah. Nice. No, okay. just, Thank uh, you. Anyway. Let's go back here. We uh, we do everything, project service index, right? Uh, blah blah blah, and we have this index.js. We set that up. So this one is a little bigger than than necessary because we are actually uh, uh, implementing or configuring Redux in this one, right? Or the Redux toolkit. So that's why it grew a little bit. Yeah, but it's it's not unavoidable. Good. I mean, right? And it also makes you know, stay in scope, but it also Makes right. future uh, right. uh, PRs. I think I think this is mergeable. Uh, I would say, yeah. uh, you know, looks good to me. Uh, All right. If you say that, then I can merge it. Yeah. <clears throat> so I wonder if I go here now uh, and I see LGTM. And oh, we didn't. Uh, oh yeah, right. Because yeah, okay. that I that I just do that. That's not yeah. no problem. Um, and here's the and, thing. So w it is approved by me already because I approve it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And now you want? Do we want to squash and merge? We spoke about this last time. I think we should. Def I've been squashing and merging on on morning pages, and I'm a convert. It makes the commit history much cleaner. And and as you pointed out last time, nothing is lost. You can still see. Uh, you know, these have yeah. uh, these these will still be accessible. Uh, they're just a, a click away, so that's I think yeah, I think very handy. So I think we confirm. All right. Yep. And wait a minute, I'm delete that. Okay. Yeah. You know what? No, no, no. Do co-authored, but you can do co-authored by Thomas at at Craft Academy SC. Uh, yeah. What a shit show. I need to fix that. It's been on my bucket to do list, but it just doesn't happen. Okay. Uh, like so. Um, yeah. Good stuff. Yep. Merging. Yeah. All we right. should get some, some nice continuous integration. And, you know, I'm going to go ahead and delete the branch because you can do that. They can be restored and we don't need it. Right. But we're not quite done because. In our issue now, we should probably mark this as resolved somehow because it's open, right? Right. So here I can close it. I have some options. I have close as not planned or closed as completed. Yeah. That's fine, right? Close as completed. And since your this is a but, but before you do that, you... hold on. You know what? Before you do that, uh, yeah. why don't you head over to. Uh to, you know, Craft Academy projects and take a look at it from that yeah. perspective, you know? Yeah, I'm heading over there. Uh, good call, because there, of course, 
you know, what we didn't we... move this into in review. Yeah. But I can just do that. <laughs> okay, and now, now it's you, in review. You can just move it to done and right and let's go ahead over to back to the issue now yeah i'll reload the issue see if it indicates that it maybe it indicated that i moved it no 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 okay. it did not oh no look look on the side it says it does link to projects and it says which project it is done. and it says status done and i can change it from here too ah so that's ah, interesting. Ah, okay, okay, okay. But okay. a little bit of a shortcoming from UX perspective is it should close yeah. the issue when it's done. Or do we have not an... Yeah. Is there another... Mm. Is there a way for us to... If I open it here, I have status linked pull... Oh, we didn't link the pull request. Maybe that's it. Uh, show all fields, repo, milestones. Yeah. So apparently there's a way to link pull requests. Yeah, but how so do we'll you do have that? to experiment with that when we open the next one. I think maybe it's in the PR we can link it to a project, perhaps. Perhaps. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Probably not. No, but reference an issue PR or discussion. We reference the issue with the link, but we didn't reference. I don't know. I don't know. Because here you're linking to. No, here you're linking to the pull request. Yo, now here we go. Oh. I uh, I just I you just found did it? that. Let's, yeah. No. It's, uh, shit. Uh, so see, we see this, you know, this was my reference, but I could have used this one and use, use it can view list of projects. Ah. There, we there we go. And okay, if I do update just hash. Comment, but it still right. doesn't link it, you know. No link pull request. No, okay, so that wasn't that. Okay, hold on a second. Um, no, it's somewhere else. This, uh, let's remove that and then we just say reference cypress setup but this looks like a pr oh because it is a pr yeah now never okay you know what let's not waste any more time on this because no, it's already no, linked uh, yeah anyway we can close this issue definitely you can go on and close that issue yeah all right i'm closing the issue which can always be reopened so no, it's not destructive at least. But I actually closed it from the um, projects view. So, you know, I opened this up and I was able to close it here. So the question is if I now go here. Yeah, but it, it is issues, closed. Yeah. No, it, it did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Right. Okay, so at least, at least, so I guess like you're supposed to, the, the project um, interface dashboard is kind of where you're controlling everything more easily. Yeah. Uh, looks like. All right, we can live with that. Yeah. All right. Uh, cool. Okay, so let's head over here. Let's uh, go to my. Do I have a terminal somewhere? Yes, <laughs> I do. I was working on some other stuff. So let's just cd out of this. Oh, shoot. Right, cd auth raw. There we go. And I'm just going to do git status just so yeah i didn't have anything good stuff because that would have been a shit show right the uh, git checkout main main call the development right? yeah it's it's de it's development i think oh it's development okay oh sorry yeah all oh, right there it is right and then git pull upstream development yeah. And we probably need to yarn up uh, so we will get the the packages. Yeah. Up to date. I'm doing the same thing. Right. And so we're going to go into some development mode. Lots of talking today, but that's, mm -hmm. that's the way it is. <clears throat> I think reading code and talking about code is... is uh, 
uh, often equally as interesting as uh, as coding. I mean, it's nothing beats game. coding, but um, it's a good thing. Let's see. So summertime in my computer is uh, not used every day. Um, probably need to free up some internal memory. I'm good. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to just run Cypress on this guy to see that I'm all up and running. And right, so we want to see... Um, May want to add some of those, uh, what you'll see in a second, some of those extra flags um, so that uh, once Cypress launches, you're going to have to click through, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You recently cleaned your, uh, right. Oh, wow. That's very safe. A little verification. I don't get that on my computer. Uh, I did upgrade my OS to the latest yeah. version. Yeah, I got this E2E testing BS here, right? Yeah. So we will pass. So, the, yeah, I'm just going to run through these guys and then we can make the the, um, the configuration on this. Uh, you know, which in a strict strict mode should be uh, uh, like a com config, like a patch, uh, not a patch, it's rather a, a chore, right? Uh, it should be a chore. Yeah. Uh, user sees a list of projects. Uh, we should be good on that. Right. So we have that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Right. Let's stop this baby. Open this up. Um, there we go. Uh, so here we just say Cypress open and then E to E, right? And then browse. That's right. Yeah. So, or you can uh, use the dash B as, um, as the shorthand, I think. You can? Like uh, this? Yeah, with a single dash. All oh, right, of course. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, right. So it's just going to test. Well, I, I guess we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. So we don't have to rely on our memory. We can test these things. And so for, just to reiterate, uh, the uh, you just saw that behavior that is out of the box, that the Cypress rather is, is presenting you with a, with a dialogue. If you want to run end-to-end -end tests and what browser you want to use, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to be the guy that always does this manually. You want to, uh, um, you want to automate that. And that's why we're passing in those flags uh, to, the, to the startup command. And also, yeah. I, I, uh, I face a little bit of pushback on the start server and test thingy uh, that I'm, I'm a great fan of. And uh, we had a debate, me and a, a, a colleague recently. I stand by my decision that I think <laughs> that this start server and test uh, package makes sure that the application is started and that the HTTP response is correct before mm -hmm. starting the test um, the, the 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 test suit however sorry that i'm jumping back and forward here you see that it hanged for me here and that's really weird yeah. because it's, it recent you know so this is an nvm uh, issue and for some reason i'm using 17 it didn't do that just to, on my previous run, which is so weird. Uh, so I'm just going to say NVM use 16.3. What? 16.13. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. 16.13. Right. And now we should be able to run this. So huh. Huh. I don't know why it switched. I think, yeah. Yeah. Right. So gotcha. All right. So we're up and running on this one, which means that I can stop this. I can do uh, git checkout wow. new branch. Uh, what? 
not that we need to do it, but Cyprus is already in 10.2. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, they're, they're, I guess, as you said, you know, when you roll out a big thing, a lot of little patches become right. apparent quite quickly, necessary things. So they're, uh, they're busy. They're also claiming that they run twice as fast on Apple Silicon M1 chips in 10.2. There we go. Bragging rights. Cool. That's what they... Yeah, are. bragging rights. Uh, right. User can see read more. Okay, so I will start um, by right, creating a new file here. User... Uh, well, um, oh yeah. link on project and it, we, we just say cy.js i'm so sad that we don't use feature the feature <laughs> keyword anymore anyway uh we're just gonna do a describe uh, and so each pro no uh, uh visibility no uh, shit, that is, formulating those messages is always hard. Oh, it's horrible. But do, what, what do we have on the other one? Let's just uh, rely on... When I use a visited application, person. right. Uh, so, when... Um, uh, see the uh, project uh, listing. Mm -hmm. Listing, right? And then we could start... <laughs> When you see, um, uh, well, we, what we could say describe oh, as uh, uh, while as uh, while authenticated, while authenticated, yeah, and and then another describe. Oh shit! No, uh, so I have too many of this while, you know, as a visitor. Yeah. Right, and then we can just um, add this up here, mm -hmm. and so we will do the same sort of interception, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, so this kind of calls for for an mm -hmm. extraction, right? Agreed. Uh, <clears throat> so I could just copy this, comment this out, go to support, go to commands. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we can say Cypress um, commands, commands add and then we can call it visit application mm -hmm. right and then we just yeah. have a callback right yeah no arguments there and then we just do this right yeah, yeah. And then I'm just going to fix this thingy uh, for this entire file. We can probably remove the comments, right? Yeah. yeah. But save the line one. Yeah. Exactly. And now I can say, I can, uh, well, I don't know. Yeah, I can just say CI. Yeah. Uh, visit application. Visit sit application. Right, um, and we should probably do yarn Cyprus. Right. Not sure if our viewers have fallen asleep. This could be, it was a long, long, uh, <laughs> uh, long stream, uh, but you know, it is what it is. Let's see. This one should pass for us. Yes, it does. Good stuff. Uh, oops. Oh, that was what I wanted to do. What did they do? I know. I've been doing the same thing. It's the one below it. Yeah, okay. Right. Uh, right. So let's let's yeah. remove this. And one thing that should be universal for both these tests is that uh, here in the before block, before each, we want to do CI visit application, right? Mm -hmm. And we're just going to have to turn this up, format our code, there we go. Uh, 
right while authenticated okay so we could write something is you know is uh, when users uh, uh, when a user uh, see a project listing while authenticated as authenticate as an authentic as an, as an as an authenticated user right <coughs> uh, oh shit. okay whatever um, is expected to see uh, a read more oops mm -hmm. read more link right link uh, for for yeah. each project mm -hmm. right and we yeah. would find, play some you know some test code uh, but before we do this now here's the deal right because we could write a test for 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 getting the list of projects right uh, But it would be uh, it's it's kind of the setup, the the uh, the act, right? Um, you know, you could you could grab the list of projects. You can either look for a data CY specific to the link, or yeah, grab the first one, grab the right. children, right, and uh, click a link. Or yeah, something. so we could call this. Look, we can make another extraction, and I know we mm -hmm. should probably wait for the for this for later. But what we can mm -hmm. do is uh, CI. We can call this project listing project items, right? Yeah. And we just want to do the first one of this in this particular test, right? Uh, yeah. So I'm going to go to commands and I'm going to say Cypress uh, commands add mm -hmm. uh, and what was it I call it project project listing. listing was it project listing project items oh change okay project items project items project listing items perhaps I don't know ah let's keep it short items all right, and then we just do a callback, and we just do this. Right, and so this should pass still. Right, it does good, uh, which means that I can do um, can see read more right, so we could say see why project items and again first mm -hmm. we should uh, you need to call first as a function. oh shoot sorry it's not then ruby should <laughs> and then we should say something like contain um uh an href or ha no have uh no contain well let's keep it simple read more Something like that. Do we do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then this should fail for us, right? Yeah. Yeah. Expected to try and list items to contain read more. It does not contain read more. Okay. But the thing is that I want to. I want to do, do this as an authenticated user, right? So mm -hmm. the question here is, can I, can I, uh, what I can do here is something like, you know, CI window, window, uh, it's store uh, as a string, right? Uh, and then I can say invoke invoke dispatch uh, no it's store, yeah in it's store invoke dispatch 
and now I can dispatch. Yeah. Uh, thing. A type, a type, and a pipe payload. So it's like a second argument uh, after dispatch. You give it an object, right? And, and that object can type. have a type key and a payload key. And here's uh, the problem with this. With this, um, you remember this uh, Redux toolbox that now we will say. <clears throat> What is it? It has a prefix, right? User, and yeah, then, right. So it's well, supposed to be a string. Yeah, it's a string, and it's going to be like user, and then not dot, but I think it's slash actually. Is it slash? It could be slash. Yeah, right. and uh, then and then set current. Set. Yeah, I'm going to set current user. Right. That, and then the payload. Mm -hmm. Payload mm -hmm. would be, and I'm just going to say, um, name. Oh shit! Yeah, name. Why would that be? Okay, name Thomas. Oh. And then email uh, Thomas at random dot com. Mm -hmm. Right, that's the user. Mm -hmm. In my opinion. Yeah. Now, and the thing is that if we if we have this discussion as we just have it okay we, we discussed it whether the syntax is okay or not but like if we try to dispatch this this will fail for us now because we don't have that slice right we don't we don't do yeah. anything with this and so this would keep on failing for us hopefully until we are we're ready to 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 do that you know um, mm -hmm. so and, and and here's my problem right because um the thing is that what should we do should, should we should we just keep on running this until we get the same error message that we just got before you know before we wrote this do you understand and then because we don't have a logic for displaying that if the current user is actually there right uh, but you know we could also say something like in these components we have the project thing uh so we say use selector and then project user say project, and then we could say uh, const uh, current user uh, equals use selector, and then we just say state state uh, user. <laughs> right, um, and then we could just say here. Uh, some logic you can say uh, if the current user is there mm -hmm. then we just say uh, paragraph uh, read more this right yeah. yeah I mean for now I mean it needs to be a link and all of that stuff later of course yeah. right? but but yeah. to make the test pass we should do this and so mm -hmm. this this should this should fail right fail because a doma right because you see oh, we, we, should. right because it's this invocation doesn't work then it they, it intercepts it interrupts the the visit yeah I think that's what it because if I let's see if I uh, let's close this down right if I comment this one out right mm -hmm. no it's not the same error maybe you should do a um, see why don't wait for um, for the first intercept to to resolve yeah, see there, there are so many things that can go wrong here now because here yeah. this can go wrong too right look yeah this can go wrong so if i comment this one out i see those those this listing you see yeah right so if i now mm. open this one up without mm -hmm. opening up this code yeah just the i still invocation. i still see this no but the only thing is that is failing right, right. okay yeah, all course. right so this is a, a, an important lesson we are not erroring out on the dispatch. No. 
You see the but dispatch. But if you pop open the, the dev tools and look at the console, do we get a warning at least that uh, we're trying to do something that cannot? Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a Redux warning. That's that's good. Well, oh no, that's you, that's was from you. Select or clear this and then rerun it uh, so that we can uh, do it step by step. No, you see, we don't get a warning about this. So you can, yeah. so, and, and this is, you know, is it a shortcoming or not? I don't know. Perhaps it's a feature, but you can always dispatch shit without, <laughs> yeah, you know, with Redux. You can scream into the board, basically. Yeah. The only thing it complains about is if I would try to dispatch a function uh, because I'm not using, you know, because I'm not using... Uh, uh, using a uh, thunk or uh, middle, some middleware, you cannot. Mm -hmm. You can. I mean, I can just try this. If I x this out and I dispatch a function, mm -hmm. and then I just say, you know, um, alert, uh, test. Right. This will mm -hmm. probably not work, right? Because it's a non-serializable value that is trying to be dispatched. Mm -hmm. So this, mm -hmm. yeah. But with thunk, you can do that. But anyway, it doesn't matter if I guess you can do it. I don't know. Um, anyway, let's just dispatch this. Uh, yeah. There we go. Right. Shit. Yeah. Too many values. Right. So it doesn't. It doesn't complain about that, which is a bit a bit worrying. It just doesn't find this read more. That's what's failing at this point. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so this this calls for uh, another. Oh. Uh, another test, do you understand? Because it, it should call yeah. it is expected to have a, a current current user in application state. And and this this is a little bit of, of nonsense now, right? Because we're not going through the interface, we're dispatching this ourselves. And then we're checking, did it work, right? So it's, yeah. uh, you know. So, but anyway, we we just gonna say, uh, ci dot window. Uh, it's store. Yeah. Uh, but now we'll invoke get state instead, right? Yeah, and then we just invoke exactly invoke. Uh, Get. Uh, in no, uh, you're missing a B. Okay, in no, get state, and then we say something like what? Uh, get state. Um, I mean, uh, yeah. how did we phrase it? Here we say it's projects. Right, pro yeah, users, current user. Right. Uh, it's. Now oh, you're going to say user, current, mm -hmm. uh, user, and then we say should uh, equal. Uh, is that how we say equal? E no. Uh, you can you can say eq. I think you can write it out. Yeah. Eql uh, I think works as well. Right, and it should be the same thing as as this, right? Which calls for some extraction, I guess, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And also, this calls for an CI window git store, which is, we could say CI application state, probably. Do you understand? Instead of having, mm -hmm. because we are calling this twice already. Yeah. Right. Um, but let's let's uh, let's work our way through this first, right? Because this should fail for us, right? Definitely. And there is a phone call. Uh, yeah say that i call it later right um right let's yeah. see yeah we don't get that it's undefined mm -hmm. exactly right so what we could in principle do um is to go into this, I, you know, what is the third time we're doing um, mm -hmm. state? 
Right. So I would what I'm I'm doing this users user yeah slice. you need a user slice yeah and new file right use uh, user slice dot js mm -hmm. and then I need to right we need yeah. to import create slice mm -hmm. right so import I think if you just type create slice oh, really? uh, you Let's should be that. getting everything for free. It's live now. There it yeah, is. yeah. So if you hit that, yeah. nice. And then you need to uh, define the initial state, right? Right. Which uh, is just the const initial state. Um, yeah. And that's going to be uh, an, object, an empty object, right? An object with a current user value. Um, also an empty and, object. Uh, uh, with a C, you know. Yeah, sorry, sorry about that. Um, that's okay. Right. Um, right. Uh, an empty object. Right. That, that's fine. Right. And then I just do. Yeah, need you to need to user slash right. this thing. Yeah. Um, so export const uh, user, user slice, slice is equal to create, create slice. slice. And that's an Which, object, right? Yeah. And which he, takes this name thing right <laughs> name and here we're gonna say user right yes yes and and again i'm not really sure if this is uh, perfectly okay in terms of plural or no. singular and shit like that right and then i yeah then i only just pass in initial state like this right mm -hmm. and yeah. then i say reducers or reducers in plural yeah and you set that to an object and then we're just gonna in this case, say set and current, current user, right? Yeah. And and that takes a callback with the state and action as its arguments. Right. So a function, I should say, actually. Right. And then uh, so state action. Right. And then. So you would say. Um, you would say state dot current user. And oh, set that actually equals to because it's a uh, yeah action function right dot payload right yeah okay and now we need to do those exports right which is... yeah there's two export things the first one is uh, export const and yeah you deconstruct mm -hmm. uh, set current user right, so export const uh, and Carly's set current user and you that's that you set that screen. equal to um, user slice dot actions yeah actions right. plural yeah, yeah and so the last export is uh, export default and that's just going to be user slice dot reducer right right and yeah. so in store i need to yeah you do I need to import uh, from yeah. features. Yeah, you can get all that for free too if you. Just, okay. Okay. Yeah. User slice, and then yeah. we say user user slice. This is what this is what we do, right? This is what we do. Right. So in principle, this should pass for us now. It does not. Why not? It's user. All right, let's have a look. Uh, maybe. Maybe do change line eight. I don't know. I I had success with the slash instead of user dot, but you can always try. You know what see. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna no, I'm not gonna do that. But we can also set a a debugger somewhere. Yeah, the the question is where. Um uh, well, uh, you know, I mean um you can always uh perhaps here. Don't, don't we have a don't we have a use effect in uh, projects? 
No, but that, but that's not going to help us to figure out what the action was. Do you understand? So here we need to know about the action. Uh, but okay, well, yeah, well, yeah, right. Um, no, I know. Uh, you know what we can do? We can set a debugger here mm -hmm. because that will tell us a syntax. Because yeah, this, one, this we know course, not works, right. and we will yeah. see what sort of uh, how, what, what that looks, looks like. like. Yeah. Right. And so let's force re force reload. Yeah. Right. So here, okay. the action is, is project. Slash. Yeah, it is exactly what you said. Yeah. All right. So, so get lost with this, and then we just go over here and we set a debugger here then. Right? Mm -hmm. And the action. Oh, well, okay. Release that. Release that. Set current user. And the action is exactly user set current user. So that works. Okay, good. Um, so the problem is not with that. The problem is with the assertion. Uh, we yeah, does um, I can hear myself as an echo though. No, no, it's okay now. Does uh, local storage does it say that as a JSON object or does it stringify it? I don't know. It's just object object. Yeah. No. Well, no. Should expected. Oh, it has something, but it's not. Oh, it's equal. Oh, it's the thing. All right. Okay. 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 Uh, the, is, oh. This is, you know, this is okay. this equal. It's like a triple. It's a triple equal. You know, so it needs to be the same ah. object. You know. Deep uh, equal. I so, see. So I think I think you should do EQL on this one. All right. Um, let me just. <laughs> right. I don't. Yeah. Let's try that. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. I agree. You go. Okay, yeah, yeah. so that's. Okay. I didn't okay. know that. That's. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that is it. Like it's deep, a chai. It's a chai inputs? thing. You know, it's. Okay. It, yeah, if you re read about the chai matters, uh, that's that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Mea culpa. Uh, okay. Right, which means that we're done with the feature now because the only thing we need to do now is to go into the component project mm -hmm. JSX. We just open up this code, mm -hmm. and we should be good. Let's find out. Let's find out. Yep. Hey, look at that. Right. Um, look at that. Right. We see read more on this one. Read which more just, on each one. Yeah. yeah which brings... uh, okay. Do we? No, no, no. Sorry. I was like, oh, are, are we going to get any warnings on that? But no, of course not. The the list items have keys. For no, but we that. still we should still uh, just copy this uh, test mm -hmm. and here uh we just say not contained is big not to is 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 is, is not to see right we can just say not to see read more for each project but this is right this but is then you may need to uh oh no 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 you're good yeah because the invocation happens in that describe block so in the next describe block we don't do that um well this, it... actually we are oh we are yeah, yeah so, so this one will this will now. fail for us now yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it does see it, you know. So if we so just, we need to move. move yeah, just the, let's let's uh, silent the other guys. Let's just run this one. Exact this one. So we make we take this one out. Yeah. And, and we, we need to call this forward. here before. Yeah. Before Shh. each. There we go. And now we should be go okay. No. Uh, no. no. Hmm. Why the? F if... Okay, you know, let's let's force, let's reload this. Yeah. Why the f Why the hell is this one? Let me see the test file one more time. Is it? It's an empty object when you initialize. Set it to false instead on initial state for current user. Or null. Because I think an empty object is truthy in yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. So yeah. setting it to there. There we go. Okay. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, and, and then run all of them, I guess, just to make sure that yeah. that didn't, I mean, it didn't mess anything up, but, uh, but it's better to. Yep. Yeah. Right. Okay. right. All right. right. Yeah. So null, null is what we live with. That, that makes more sense right. uh, for uh, rendering purposes. Okay. And so, so a, f a few questions. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to extract this into commands. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I don't think it's feature creep to say we're going to need. Though, actually, no, I like this. I like breaking it down to just application states. Yeah. And then, you know, having and do, one. And do, do I want the. Do I need to say return? It. Do I do I need to say re no? I don't. I don't need that, right? Let's try that. I don't think so. But we'll find out. All right, but get rid of line ten. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Right. Yeah. Uh. Which means that, right, I can do this here as well. Right. Right, okay, let's um, let's see. This should pass, and the whole thing should pass. I don't have all yet, but, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so we're definitely in a good state on this one. Yeah. And, you know, slowly you work your way through creating this domain-specific language with those commands. Mm -hmm. The, the problem that could be uh, could arise, of course, is that you get too many of these defined in, in one single file. So you probably want to group them somehow in, in, low, in yeah. specific files and just I, include them uh, in the commands. Right, but it is yeah, what it is. I think uh, so. Yeah, I found myself, the issue that I was running into is that I wrote lots of commands and then like I wrote more tests and I was like, oh, I really want to use this command. But now the other command I wrote was too focused on a particular test. So I couldn't reuse it. Um, yeah. So I think what, you, what you've done here with like calling it get state, instead of saying Cypress commands add one that's like set current user, we now have one that's more granular and you just chain them. I think. I think that's actually better. It's going to be, it's a better practice. You know, it's... Uh, yeah, I, maybe this is a bit academic, but um, we'll, we'll, we'll find out as we go. Right, let's just check status, git add everything, uh, git ci am. Uh, <clears throat> now, what did we do here? Um, um, adds conditional display of uh, uh, read, read, read more. more link on projects, but it's not a link yet. Right. First of all, it's not a link yet. Text on projects, and and you know, mm. one could you know this is always a, a troublesome or a hard decision to make. Should you write multi-line? commit messages on this one should you just uh, I mean in a way you could make a, a case that the, 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 the pull request description is, is fairly generic and overviewish whereas mm -hmm. each commit should should be fairly uh, uh, detailed and, and on target this is a very generic one so mm -hmm. I don't know let's let's go Sorry, on. I'm, yeah I'm being visited by a spider bro. Um, oh, really? Is it big? So if I, if I jump, no, it's tiny, but it's very fast. Oh, I'm impressed. So Hopefully we have a big issue through. with spiders in my house. Uh, each night oh, my, my okay. wife uh, starts screaming. And, <laughs> and apparently for some reason, I'm the only one that is uh, the designated uh, spider killer. Um, mm, you should yeah. not kill spiders. That's uh, I know, uh, I know, but you know. They, they when, eat pests that make us sick, you know, so. No. Keep on, Spider Bro. Anyway, keep, do, uh, what remotes do we have? Uh, I can't remember. Now I have my origin. Okay, so git push yeah. origin. 
um, we'll do the PR from from your uh, user can yeah user can see this yeah um, you have the link there oh you can actually click the link can I it just underlined when you hovered over it yeah look command click uh, command click oh yeah it opened up in a different window that's so nice what Oh, because it's, uh, it's oh, but that was in VS Code. That was in yeah, VS yeah. Code, wasn't it? Okay. My All right. Maybe I will reconsider my resistance <laughs> to, uh, now, see, to using I, I don't VS know if you've noticed, but I sometimes use the VS Code one, and sometimes I use the the the, uh, the original the, one. But now yeah. I knew that I had Cypress uh, up and running in this in this one. Right. So, yeah. But it doesn't matter really. Uh, add conditional with right. Uh, right. So here here's the thing. Uh, I need to do what? Right, what? right. Cyprus yeah, I've been getting I, I those. Uh, yeah. I've been getting those warnings too. Right. So we need um, to. But, uh, well, user can right. So uh, yeah, in progress. Right. So we need to move this into progress, and then I need to just copy. I need so to copy have... this right. And give this as a name of the PR, mm -hmm. and then I could, I think I can. Oh wait, projects. Yeah, look under reviewers uh, on this screen. Projects is listed there. If well, you hit the little card, can you add our project? Uh, not not in reviewers, but in um, the one that's after projects. Yeah, there. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, you want that. So that's listed as projects. Is that that should be enough in my mind? Yeah, uh, but the thing is that I I think I can. I just wonder if I can add this link inside of the title. Do you understand? Yeah, let's try it. We can always edit it. No, I couldn't. Right, so okay. I need to get rid of that. But what I can do is to, uh, what I can say. Sometimes pound. you can just use the GitHub shorthand and do, you know, pound sign and, and right. a number. Right, so here I can say, here you can see a list of, of then use it, right. Like, oh, but look, wait a minute. Well, look, scroll down to Art Nouveau project. Now it says status, no status. I wonder if this just creates a. But if I just update comma, right. Yeah. So, so now there is a link to the to the issue. Yeah, but wait, sc scroll down a little bit, and in projects on the right hand side. It's interesting. It's a status, no status. If you just add this to in progress now, and then. And then have a look at the Art Nouveau project. So go to your other tab. And we close this. Right. So now look, uh, it's created. Oh, what the fuck is this? No, but so, so that you just created a new one by, oh. by giving it a status. So, so basically, a pull request can automatically be made into. Yeah, a but is that here. a good thing for but us? But that's the wrong order. It's the wrong order, yeah. right? It's not a good thing for us. We don't want no, that. No, because. Huh. We don't. We, are, we don't want that at all. This is not good. Because now we we are duplicating this thing. You understand? Yeah. It should. No, I get it. Right. No. No. I'm not fond of that. Yeah, it, and it's. It, why would you, if you were using the projects to plan a project, it Why would becomes you want more to, a way to yeah. track it rather than? Yeah, I, I mean, mm. the the PR should be should be connected to the issue. The issue is listed in the in the columns, not the the PR yeah. shouldn't be listed there. And now I don't All know right. how to get rid of that. Maybe just remove the project link. Uh, yeah, but maybe I, in the I if, can't, if the I cog can't. click the cog. And on click. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So now this should be gone, right? 
Yeah, it's yeah. great. Okay. All right. I think okay. it's better for us to link this to to the pro to the issue. Yeah. Rather. But anyway, we can now move this in here, right? Yeah. And we don't have to. I do guess more. if I can see a use case if we like a hotfix or a chore that we just discover, you know, and we could then if we're yeah, it's not best practice, but but you could oh, then yeah, yeah, create yeah. yeah, I see what you mean. A, a record of that more easily in the in yeah. the project. Yeah. Hmm. All right. All right. We'll keep experimenting. Anyway, um, the big takeaway here is that, in my opinion, apart from everything else that we just discovered about the GitHub projects and, and stuff, is that mm. a extracting things into custom commands is uh, is uh, uh, is a good practice if you do it as soon as you stump, stumble upon um, code repetition. I like that. Mm. You know, giving it aliases inside of the uh, you know using aliases inside of the test but also if you do code repetition it's better in my opinion to extract than not to extract because it, it makes uh, makes your tests shorter and in my opinion easier yeah. to read so uh, that's a good thing the second thing is that if you want to y work with uh, authenticated users and as we you know, right now, we're, right now we're in the situation where we haven't really decided upon how we will authenticate our user. If we're going to use token-based, or probably we're going to use token-based, but we can also use, um, you know, JV, JW, JSON Web Tokens, JWT. Uh, if because we haven't decided on the technology we will use for the API yet, right? So we mm -hmm. simply don't know how to how to do it yet. And therefore, mm -hmm. we can just pretend that we are authenticating the user. We don't have to yeah. necessarily go through the um, uh, the interface and, and do the network call and stub it out. We can just, you know, since we uh, will store our the info about the user in in uh, in application state one way or another. So let's just pretend that we're yeah. doing that and face the the updates. Or you know, if we do something differently along the way, we can always go in and, and uh, make the necessary updates later. Um, and in my way, in my opinion, it kind of simplifies the development. We can move forward with developing features that can be restricted um, to, you know, for, for authenticated users without having the authentication in progress, in, in, in place. Mm -hmm. That's my, mm -hmm. my take on this. Does that make sense? Makes sense to me. Does it make sense to our two, two Twitch users, two, two, two <laughs> Twitch viewers? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Um, I think it's time for us to wrap it up. Yeah. Uh, much. We uh, we do have this project open sourced, so uh, it's. Um, it's under Craft Academy. Where is it? Art Nouveau. Could we like pull up a link to this in, in the chat? Let me see if I can do that here. Uh, I'm streaming from a different computer, but I can copy the repo name here. Uh, let's see. There we are. Right. Uh, so this is the repository. Something went wrong. Why would this go wrong? Can't I? Oh, it could be a restriction. Maybe no. restrict what links you can put in. I don't know. Yeah. No messages. I don't understand this, to be honest. Uh, oh, now I put. Now I pasted it. There was. I, there was a log, log, logging issue, ish kind of thing. Uh, I don't know if I missed any any messages from people, uh, but yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm new at using this restream thingy, uh, mm -hmm. but also the project thing is that open source too, or I don't know. Um, uh, no, there are no cl no. Uh, okay, so we probably need to open. I don't know if we should open the project. You see, because if I, I I just visited this page, the same page I'm looking at right now from uh, mm -hmm. from my other computer, and this one actually says private. So, uh, right. 
Yeah. Out of settings. <laughs> settings. Visibility. Manage access. There it is. There it is. Public. Right. Right. And let me just see if I can review this. Still no. Do I have to save somehow? Change is saved, and I can't see it. No, now I see it. Okay. Out move on. All right. So I can send people the link to this project but i don't know if they people might be able to f mess around with this right and and add uh weird issues did you just disappear too what uh where's my control room all right max you disappeared and you also you hang uh Okay, so your view is hanged. Oh gosh, are we running into some errors? Uh, hmm. Now he disappeared from this, and we are ish running into some really weird stuff. Oh wow, I don't know what this this means. But I'm just linking to this to this project. Right, uh, hmm. Right. Okay. His computer, Max's computer just, just, uh, uh, committed suicide in some way. Uh, I'm gonna wrap this up myself. Uh, Max is, um, is not available at the moment because of some technical issues. Thank you very much, people, for joining in. Um, this was a long stream, but we did some some interesting stuff. Let's see if we can carry on with um, the Art Nouveau project uh, in a different stream later on. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in, and I see you soon. So long.